Well, first off, Dan, thank you for the introduction. Grateful to be a part of the summit. And um, I just want to honor everyone on this on this uh, call uh, who is watching the summit and participating, participating in the summit because uh, you are seeking to um, advance your skill sets. You're seeking to acquire knowledge so that you can then apply that knowledge to um, you know, making a difference in real estate, whether it's earning more capital, whether it's um, doing uh, more good for your community, whatever your intentions are. Ultimately, um, I, my personal belief is that people are, most people are good. And when we all achieve more in real estate, when we all achieve more financially, then we can do more of what we want with our time. Therefore, by um, learning more, by sharing lessons learned, um, and today I'm going to be talking about the seven leadership laws that I've come up with. Um, I am helping you do more good in the world through the real estate activities that you choose to pursue uh, because you are a good person. And uh, I firmly believe that. So I'm grateful to be um, sharing you know, the stage with a bunch of um, successful entrepreneurs and real estate investors in the summit. And let's dive right into it. So I won't go into my background. If you if you um, want to learn more about me, you can go to you know ashcroftcapital.com. You can go to joefairless.com. Um, you can listen to my podcast, read one of my books. Um, all I'll say is we've got my company that I co-founded. We have over six hundred million dollars worth of apartment communities uh, currently. Um, so we work with accredited passive investors and we partner up on deals. Uh, so that's my background um, in a nutshell, very concisely. Uh, so let's talk about the seven leadership laws that I've come up with. And these leadership laws are for you. And they're for you to do what you choose with them. Um, I've not only come up with laws, but also some practical things that you can, you can use to implement these laws. So it's not just concept-based. These are actually... Um, some things that you can practically do to help you be a more effective leader. And why do we need to be a more effective leader? Well, we need to be a more effective leader because um, if we're not leading, then we're being led. And we got to be careful where we're being led if we are being led. So it's more, I, I believe it's better to be more intentional about where we want to go and be inspirational with those for those around us so that we can be a more effective communicator, be an effective influencer, and ultimately, um, help steer the ship in the direction that we know we need to take it. So um, when number one, first, first leadership law I have is be your word. And uh, this surprisingly, when we are, when we keep our word and not only keep our word, but when we are our word, so it, there's no separation between who we are and what we say we're going to do. Surprisingly, it stands out uh, because there's, a lot of people who say one thing and then uh, don't do it uh, or don't follow through exactly how they say they're going to follow through. And it's one thing to conceptually understand this, but it's another to actually practice it and practice it when times are really tough because that's ultimately when we're going to be tested, when uh, no one's looking or uh, when we're uh, put in a situation that is incredibly um, challenging for us. And one challenge I came across early on in my apartment investing career was a deal, my very first deal before we formed Ashcroft, before I met my business partner, Frank, my very first syndication where I lost money and um, I personally paid back my investors plus I paid them a 14% annualized cash on cash return. And it was very challenging because um, it, the deal did not go according to how um, I planned and I learned a lot of lessons. One of them is um, know what you're good at and what is required in order for your overall project to be successful and then match yourself up with other team members who have those skill sets that complement you. Um, but when times are tough, regardless of if you're um, you know, challenged with a deal or uh, challenged with um, any other circumstance within the, the, the business or personal, if you are your word, then... Um, it's going to help you in the long run and you're going to feel better about yourself as well. And true leaders are their words, regardless of what gets thrown their way. And I, I, I can tell you that now um, fast forwarding, what five, four or five years later, I've received a handwritten three page handwritten thank you notes from investors. Actually once, once I paid them uh, on that first deal, 
Um, once I paid them back, I received three page letter, um, handwritten thank you notes. I received a Ruth Chris gift cards to go to dinner with my wife and I and our, our, our baby girl. And so developing those long-term relationships e it is more important than any short-term transaction. And it's, it's good to know that from a business standpoint uh, because, well, uh, it, it's good to know that when you go through some challenging things, when you are, are your word, you're going to be better off in the long run. But even regardless of the business thing, being your word will be um, just, you'll just feel better. So number one, be your word in a, a very um, practical challenge that you can undertake should you choose to do so is be your word for one day. Do what you say you're going to do and everything you say you're going to do for one day. And then reflect on that. Um, confirm that, yes, you did do everything you said you're going to do. And then do it the second day and the third day. And ideally, you're going to get momentum and you're going to continue to um, do that on an ongoing basis. And that will set you up for success in the long run. And even when times are tough, um, be your word and do what you say you're going to do and follow through. So that's number one. That's what leaders do. They are their word. They don't just say something. They actually um, embody what they're going to say. So that's number one. Number two is care for others. So um, anytime I get ready for an investor presentation, and we've got, we've closed on 23 apartment communities and we've had approximately 23 conference calls. Didn't do the conference calls early on. I was doing one-on-one -on -one conversations. Now we have a lot of investors, so we do conference calls. Anytime I prepare for a conference call, um, I have an outline, and in that outline, in that outline at the very top, it says, um, investors need this. Investors, uh, by me presenting this opportunity, will benefit their families both ben will benefit, those who they influence will benefit, and the world will be a better place. Sounds a little hokey, I know, but that's how I feel. By presenting our investors the opportunities that we come across and the opportunities to increase their, their, uh, their capital through the investments that we do, uh, I believe that they are better off, their families are better off, and the ripple effect within their sphere of influence is better off. So my suggestion is to hone a leadership skill of caring for others is prior to any conversation that you have with, um, with an investor or if you're doing a presentation, think about what do we have in common and why do I really care about the, the people who I'm speaking to? And that's why um, when I was get, preparing for this conversation, I really thought about you know, what do we have in common? Well, we're all seeking to learn. We're all seeking to advance ourselves and to do more good um, through real estate. And uh, some might not be um, uh, uh, might not be a conscious, hey, I want to do more good and I'm going to do real estate. As a result of that, it might be, hey, I just need to pay my bills, so I'm going to do some real estate. But if you're fixing and flipping a property, you're fixing it up and then you're flipping it to someone for a, you know, so they can live in a good home. So I believe we're, we, it's, it's pretty easy to make that connection for us doing more good in the world. So when you are speaking to other investors or when you're speaking to groups, think about what do we have in common? Ask yourself that always because people won't care about what you have to say until they know they care about you. And that's very important to, um, uh, from my experience, to really uh, um, uh, embody uh, when, whenever, we're, whenever we're talking to people and prior to any important conversations. Number three, take care of ourselves. We got to take care of ourselves, just like the airplane thing where you put the oxygen mask on yourself before you put it on your kiddo or, or someone else. First, you got to take care of yourself in, for, in order to take care of others. A very practical thing that I suggest doing is having a document every year that says categories of improvement. And in those categories of improvement, you can list out certain things that you want to improve on so that you are taking care of yourself. Um, so for example, hey, I want to um, achieve this financial goal within 12 months. Uh, and in order to do that, I'm going to attend these seminars and I'm going to listen to these books. I'm going to read X amount of books. I will um, have fitness goals. So I want to weigh a certain amount or I want to bench press or I want to squat a certain amount, whatever it is, a personal development. Um, have a certain number of, of 
of YouTube videos you watch with Les Brown or Zig Ziglar or Jim Rome, Tony Robbins, etc. cetera. Um, relationships, where do you want to be in the relationships? Because when you take care of yourself and, and you focus on ways that you want to continually improve, then you're going to be able to take care of others much more so than if you're not initially focusing on yourself. Um, I remember Oprah talking about this on, uh, in, during a conversation where she was interviewed and she's like, I got to take care of myself first because when I take care of myself, then I've got that abundance to then go um, take care of others around me and then go make a difference in the world. So that's number three. Number four is know your outcome. Prior to any conversation I have, any uh, meeting I have, uh, well, I'll say most, most conversations, most meetings I have, I know what my outcome is. And that can take conversations from what are scheduled to be 30 minutes or 60 minutes to four minutes. Um, and what I do uh, when, uh, when I'm talking to people is I, I ask them, okay, what's your ideal outcome for this conversation? And that allows me to then make sure that we continue to stay on track for w accomplishing that ideal outcome. Sometimes those conversations still are 30 minutes. Sometimes they tend to be a little bit longer than that uh, or Again, sometimes they can be very, very short, but when we go in uh, knowing our outcome, that, that tends to be a very effective way of being uh, efficient with our time and effective with our time. And I, I can tell you that um, when, just from a, a, a goal standpoint, when you approach your, your goals and your, your outcomes that you're looking to achieve, um, sometimes when we know our outcome, uh, we, won't, we, we won't achieve the outcome um, so we can have a set, uh, a sense of letdown. And one suggestion I have for how I've overcome that and maybe something that'll be helpful for you is what I call 50-50 goals. Tim Ferriss talks about this on his podcast. I don't know if he exactly calls it 50-50 goals, but um, I call it 50-50 goals. And what it is, is 50% um, of your outcome or your goal is actually achieving that specific outcome or goal. And then the other 50% is identifying what you learn throughout that process, regardless of if you achieve that specific outcome, that will be beneficial for you for future goals or future outcomes. That way, regardless of if you do or don't achieve the specific quantifiable goal, you still have the, um, the lessons that you've learned along the way that you can apply towards future goals. So you're still making progress. Uh, so the 50-50 goal mindset, as well as asking what is the ideal outcome for this prior to conversations can be very effective so that you are more efficient and a more effective leader. Um, so number five in the laws of leadership is keeping perspective. Um, my worst day is someone's best day. Uh, I, I, I recently interviewed someone on a podcast and they mentioned that and it really resonated with me because it's true. It's so true. Uh, I, yeah, I volunteer for different things. One of them is hospice and my worst day is certainly um, someone's best day in the hospice. And I, having perspective is necessary in order for us to be effective leaders because that gives us the context of how important this challenge that we're coming across really is. Now, it's not to say that um, when we're over on um, our budget for a certain line item in a renovation, that that's not a, a bad thing and that shouldn't be immediately addressed. But it also puts things in context so that um, we see the bigger picture of the deal and it allows us, our mind, to be a little bit more flexible with what are some solutions um, to that challenge because we're not so wrapped up in this being Armageddon because we're over a line item budget on uh, during the renovation. And a couple questions that I, I would suggest to ask yourself is when you come across challenges, um, ask yourself, and this, I got this from Tony Robbins, what's great about this or what's not perfect yet? And when you ask yourself what's great about this, well, okay, we're over on our, car, our carpet budget for renovations. Uh, why are we over on the carpet budget? Well, maybe it's because the cost of uh, this, this certain vendor um, charge us more than we thought we would. Well, maybe that will op open up the opportunity for us to um, think, hey, maybe we should negotiate our vendor contracts, uh, not only for this, but across other vendors. And then um, the project as a result will actually come in less uh, from expenses because we took that initiative for neg renegotiating the vendor contracts from that one isolated incident with being um, having more more than um, we thought on carpet on as an expense or maybe it'll say maybe we need to do different flooring 
Uh, maybe we don't do carpet. Maybe we do uh, a, a certain type of vinyl flooring or something like that. So um, what's great about this or what's not perfect yet? Asking yourself those questions, asking quality questions will help you be a more effective leader because they'll keep your mind open to solutions that wouldn't present themselves if we were so narrowly focused on that one particular problem. And you know, one thing I do um, and I have to keep my perspective is I have a countdown clock in my office and that countdown clock literally has the days, the, what is that? We've got days, hours, minutes, and seconds. I'm looking at it right now. Days, hours, minutes, and seconds uh, ticking down, seconds ticking down, reminding me that time is important and how we spend our time is important. But it also keeps perspective because when something is challenging, I'm like, well, I got that many days left on earth. So I think I'm going to choose to be happy in this moment, even though it's challenging. And then let's come up with a solution. Um, number six is we're all in this journey together, thinking about it from, as a team where we're all on the same team. So whenever I call Verizon and you know, change my bill or something or, or update my, my plan or whenever I'm speaking to um, people, uh, uh, my property management company or if I'm speaking to investors or if I'm speaking to you know, the person at uh, the Subway restaurant, we're all on the same team. We're all on this earth a very small period of time relatively speaking to earth and um, the history of earth and mankind so where if we approach the conversation like hey you and i are on the same team we've got a mutual purpose um and the mutual purpose will clearly vary based on the relationship and who we're talking about then we're going to be more effective in our communication we're going to be more influential uh, with the people that we come across. And as a result, we're going to be more effective leaders. So uh, regardless of if it's someone at a fast food restaurant or, or if it's a business partner or investor, thinking about it, hey, we're all on the same team and know what the mutual purpose is for that team. That's really, that's really important. So it's not just, yeah, we're all, let's hold hands, we're all on the same team, but what is the mutual purpose that we have in this moment um, together? That way, um, if there is some conflict within the team members, you can, uh, you can go back and go back to the mutual purpose that you two have or you all have, and then you can build up from there. A book that really um, nails this process and is a book called Crucial Conversations. Highly recommend it. Phenomenal book, Crucial Conversations. So lastly, um, leadership law number seven is leaders document their success and challenges uh, because there is no bad deal. There's only bad habits and practices. So when we've done in order to get to this point, if we're in a pickle, what have we done to put ourselves in a pickle? Then we can identify the bad habits and practices that led us to this point, And then we can course correct for future opportunities. Um, I've done a daily journal, been, been doing it for over four years now. And it's phenomenal to go back and see what I was working on, what I was thinking, who I was spending time with, what I was looking to, how I was looking to design my life, and now to today, what's transpired, um, where have I made progress, where have I, have I not made progress, because when you see what you haven't made progress on, you can really dig into, well, I need a different approach. I need to come up with different strategies and I need to implement them, uh, because what I have been doing I'm saying the same darn thing year in, year out, so I need to fix it. Or um, things have gone right. Holy cow, uh, we were working on deals that were you know, 50 units or 100 units, 150 units, whatever it is. Now we're buying 500-unit properties, and we're doing multiple deals um, every quarter, something like that. Wh whatever your path of progress is, having a daily journal. So specifically what I do, it's really simple. I just have a Word document. It's just a Word document, password protected Word document. I put the day's date. I put the um, the bullet points underneath, and then I just type whatever I want. You know, sometimes it's three, four bullet points. Sometimes it's five, six bullet points. Sometimes I put pictures where I email the pictures to myself, and then I drag them over to the Word document. Um, sometimes I, most of the time, I don't do pictures because that's a little timely. Um, but it's it's just it's a wonderful thing to do and to capture the feelings that you have in the moment um, as well as capturing progress or lack thereof. So by doing these seven uh, leadership laws, by adhering to the seven leadership laws and then putting them into practice, um, you will create 
long-term relationships with those you come across and you will be a more effective leader. You will be more influential. So Dan, thank you so much for um, letting, letting me uh, share the stage with all the really successful real estate entrepreneurs that you have on here. Grateful for this conversation and everyone. I really uh, enjoyed it and looking forward to a successful summit.